So in one of our last videos, we learned that water can be both an acid and a base. So what I'd like to talk about now is talk about water specifically. Okay? And we're actually going to look at water being both an acid and a base when it's by itself. So we call this the ionization of water. It's covering section 10.3 in your book. And we call this, when we have an acid and a base acting at the same time, this is auto-ionization. So basically what happens is water is acting both as an acid and a base. So if we look at this and an equation, we're going to have one water molecule act as an acid, and we'll have a second one that acts as a base. So our first molecule here, this is going to be our acid, so it's going to donate a proton. So when this donates a proton, it's going to be left with OH minus, which is aqueous. Then our H2O here that's acting as our base is going to accept the proton. So when it accepts a proton, Basically, I'm going to keep this color coded for a second. If we have H2O and it accepts a proton, okay, so that the red hydrogen is coming from the first water molecule and that's being added to the second one shown in blue. Otherwise, this is just H3O+. Plus. So when we have the auto-ionization of water, which is going to happen with um, when water is by itself, okay, water is going to act as an acid, some of it's going to act like a base, and it's going to be in equilibrium with a hydroxide ion and uh, the hydronium ion. So if we're in equilibrium, we can write an equilibrium constant expression. So we have our capital K. This is going to be our products over our reactants. Okay, our reactants are all in the liquid phase, so we only have our products here. So our equilibrium constant is going to be equal to the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of hydroxide ion. Now this is um, because our acids and bases are always in water, okay, this is something that's always happen happening in our acids and bases. Okay, our water is always dissociating into a hydroxide ion and a hydronium ion. So this equilibrium is very, very important for us. So it gets its own special equilibrium constant instead of Ka or Kb for an acid or a base. It's Kw for the equilibrium constant for water. And this is an expression, this equation, you will want to know. And if we look at this experimentally, okay, to determine these con the concentrations here, in absolutely very, very pure water, the concentration of H3O plus is equal to the concentration of OH minus, and they are neutral, pure water is neutral, 
and they both have a concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. Okay, so really small molarity there, meaning that this equilibrium definitely is, is favoring over on our left-hand side, but we do have some of our um, hydroxide and hydronium ions present from water. So if we then want to calculate our value for Kw, we have basically 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 times 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7, which is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And this is our value for Kw. This is also something that you are going to need to know. All right. So in our, our uh, solutions of acids and bases, basically we can look at our different concentrations of H3O plus and OH minus in order to figure out if a solution is acidic or basic. Okay. So if we have uh, something where our concentration of OH minus is equal to the concentration of H3O plus, that is a neutral solution. It's neither acidic nor basic. So we call this neutral. If our concentration of the hydronium ion is greater than the concentration of the hydroxide ion, and if our acid is greater than our base, we have an acidic solution. And if our concentration of H3O plus is smaller than the concentration of OH minus, or if our OH minus is larger than H3O plus, okay, our base has a higher concentration. That means we have a basic solution. So this is helpful for us if we want to look at a solution and figure out if it's acidic or basic. Okay. We can also use our equilibrium constant expression, our Kw expression, and our value for Kw to be able to calculate one or the other. So if we're given a concentration of H3O plus, we can calculate the concentration of OH minus. Or if we're given the concentration of OH minus, we can calculate the concentration of H3O plus. Okay, we can do that for any solution that we're looking at. If we're given one of these concentrations, we can calculate the other. So let's look at it. So if the concentration of H3O plus is 3.0 times 10 to the negative 4 molar, let's determine the concentration of OH minus. And let's also uh, look at, is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? So like I said, to look at this um, problem, we're going to take our expression for Kw okay, and our value for Kw. So we know Kw, we know our concentration of H3O plus. We can then solve for the concentration of OH minus. So we have our Kw expression. We want to solve for the concentration of OH minus. So we're going to divide both sides by the concentration of H3O plus.
So those cancel. So we have concentration of OH minus is equal to KW divided by the concentration of H3O plus. We can now plug in our values here. For Kw, we know that this is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And divide that by our concentration of H3O+, plus, which was given to us. We have 3.0 times 10 to the negative 4. And plug this into our calculator. Now, when I'm plugging in uh, scientific notation, it's a really good habit just to always put it into uh, parentheses so you know that you're, when you're dividing it, you are actually dividing it. Okay, so 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. We're going to divide that by 3.0 times 10 to the negative 4. And we get 3.33333 times 10 to the negative 11. So we have two sig figs in each of these values. So I'll just write 3.3 times 10 to the negative 11. And don't forget, we always want to include units. Okay, The only value that we have that doesn't have units are the equilibrium values. Okay, So this 1.0 times 10 to the neg negative 14 does not have a unit with it but we are not calculating that. We are calculating a concentration. And remember those square brackets mean a concentration and molarity. So we have 3.3 times 10 to the negative 11, our concentration or molarity of OH minus. Mm -hmm. And then our next question we want to ask is, is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? So we know our concentration of H3O plus is on the order of 10 to the negative 4. Concentration of OH minus is 10 to the negative 11. So our concentration of H3O plus is greater. That makes that solution acidic. And that's because 10 to the negative 4 is greater than 10 to the negative 11. Okay, that was our concentration of H3O plus versus concentration of OH minus. So our two answers here, we have our concentration of 3.3 times 10 to the negative 11 molar hydroxide ion, and we've determined that this is an acidic solution. In the next video, we'll learn a way, instead of looking at our two concentrations and comparing them to each other, we're actually going to develop what's called the pH scale, which is going to give us a, a simpler view of determining whether or not a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral.